Hey guys, and welcome back to Kirby Planet Robobot. We move now to Area 2, Resolution Road, or as I like to call it, the City World. Let's do this. I like the uh, design of the city uh, in this game. It's very cute and charming. You know, it feels like it feels like something a kid would put together. You know, if they're imagining what a mechanicized uh, city looks like. And considering the fact that uh, you know Kirby is basically a series designed for children, I mean, it makes sense. But it's got its own kind of charm, and I like that. Some of the houses actually look like, and I don't know whether this was intentional or not, like milk cartons with straws in them, or like big gulps and whatnot. Oh my god, yeah, I did not notice that until now. They are fucking milk cartons, that's awesome. Uh-huh, but uh, enough about milk cartons and other childish things. We move now to the modes of Kirby Plant Robot. So, Mr. Wikiman, tally me banana and tell me what those modes are. Okay, so looking here, uh, the Robobot armor can basically get up to 13 copy of abilities known as modes. Now, we've seen some of these already. We've seen fire, we've seen spark back there, uh, sword, obviously. Now some modes haven't come up yet. Uh, oh, you see bomb, actually. They have, uh, there are s particular points in the game where you transition into a mode to do, like, a completely different kind of gameplay style. I've mentioned wheel, which is basically you're zooming really fast throughout the level and you're flipping back and forth between the foreground and background. Another one we'll encounter later on is jet, which actually turns the game into a shmup, and for some reason, Kirby and Shmups have been crossed over together so many times. I don't know why that's the one they wanted to do. Maybe Sakurai is a fan of those. I, I like those stages, like, make no mistake. And you fight some pretty good bosses um, in this game when you're in the jet mode, so it's a welcome addition, definitely. What do you think about this, the parasol mode for the Robobot armor? Parasol is okay. I mean, it's not my favorite mode. But I do have to admit, the uh, helicopter blades are pretty useful for attacking enemies from you know, underneath, and I, I seem to recall there was like one or two situations where I had parasol mode and I was able to use that to great effect in like a particular stage. If I do remember it, when it comes up, I'll definitely point it out. <laughs> well, of course you will, because you'll have, you know, visual feedback. You may be referring to the fact that parasol robot can blow away poison clouds. Oh yeah, yeah, there's like uh, sections later on where you'll have to bypass, like, clouds of poison that are moving around a particular path, but a uh, parasol can actually blow those away and make it easier. Okay, yeah, I remember now. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait, no, we got a mini boss. I'm sorry, all Pop right. Put the wiki <laughs> down! Put it down and fight this weird Pokemon-looking motherfucker. Yeah, uh, some kind of offshoot Gen 7 kind of thing. I guess it evolves into a... I'm not sure what the hell it would evolve into, now that I think about it. Maybe, like, a psychic mask? kind of Pokemon. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting with this one. Sort of like a proto-domino mask sort of thing. Well, maybe something challenging. That would be nice, because uh, Telepathos is a fucking joke, let me tell you what. But the power you get from it is pretty neat. An obvious Earthbound homage here, or just Ness, if you want to get pedantic. ESP lets you do this. That's its main attack. It basically stands you still, and you can put like a psychic bubble of energy over like things and it also has some other moves it has like a weird psionic dash move things like that i i, I do like this power up like i don't mind using it it's not my preferred one because i prefer to be mobile when i'm you know using defensive abilities in kirby and just in games in general and i like to be able to move around while i'm shooting usually this power up kind of has you stay in place but you know as power ups go it's pretty you know good well designed i think it's a great addition to the series i would give it at least a four out of five at least a four out of five i'm thinking a seven out of ten myself because i tend to go by the uh, ten mark man that's a really angry looking boss why is it so angry and that's true i mean like I'm always, I don't know, maybe this is an alternate Cars universe where it crossed over with Kirby, you never know. <laughs> oh my god, have you seen the teaser trailer for Cars 3? It's so Holy pretty and grimdark for some reason, I don't know why. Man, I can only predict what the uh, story is going to be in Cars 3. It's probably going to be <laughs> something like, uh, what, 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 did you have another one you were thinking of then? No, no, it was just like, you know those old beginning of 2016, end of 2016 memes that go about <laughs> Twitter and whatnot? There's this one Cars one where it's just, they have a picture of Lightning McQueen from the first movie, all happy and smiling, and then for the end of 2016 one, it's that one where he's flipping through the air and it's all like grayscaled and whatnot. And I just replied to that with one chow. <laughs> oh god, I'm very easily amused. I'm actually a giggle puss. I don't know if this comes across because I'm so anal retentive most of the time, but I laugh at the drop of a hat. 
Well, I mean, that does sound really funny, and, uh, it, 2016, let's be honest, has definitely been one of those kind of years, but, um, I, I have seen that trailer. I have a sneaking suspicion it's gonna be a story about somebody who basically becomes a cripple. Like, no, no joke, I'm not kidding with you, it really does seem like they're gonna go for that, because why else would they perpetrate that kind of destruction so early on? But they repurposed the car into a wheelchair, <laughs> You know, you joke, but a, oh a motorized uh, crazy wheelchair, that's actually kind of fun. I'm actually a fan of, like, whenever they take wheelchairs for, like, characters and put, like, gear and shit in them. Like, you remember, like, Steel, right? That one movie? Uh, you mean, the like, DC superhero? Yes, uh, you have watched Nostalgia Critic, right? Oh, because I am Kazam. <laughs> but, um... One cool thing about that movie is, like, the the character Sparky, who basically gets uh, disabled and, like, her her legs are broken beyond repair. She has to use a wheelchair. She actually puts, like, fucking lasers and shit in her chair. And in the climax, she's actually shooting at a lot of the bad guys. That's pretty cool. There's also this one show called Mantis, where what it was, it was a guy who was basically disabled. But he had, like, a, a power suit frame that he would use to give him the ability to walk again, and he'd use that to fight crime, and that was always really cool, in my opinion. I don't think Flame's all that good for fighting the Invader armor, because much like with ESP, you've kind of got to be stock still, when I show using its dash mechanic, but uh, wow, it's doing a lot of damage otherwise, so maybe it's just my mobility that was shit. I'm sorry for blaming the power-up, it's what I do in crisis times. Well, I don't know, fire has always been effective against steel since Generation 2, so there you go. There you go. Well, my arm and air. I also love how all uh, the Robobot has various different kinds of tools that we've, you know, been seeing so far to interact with the level. It has a wrench, it has drills, things like that. Those drills in particular will come into a very huge play. Oh, it finally, it's jet time. Oh yeah, I love this shit. Jet mode is pretty fun, I gotta say. I I've always liked shmups, even though I'm not a huge, like, player of them. But this one has a really useful charge ability, where it shoots, like, missiles forwards and backwards, which is great for some bosses that you'll come up against later on. What I find odd is, there's a car mode via wheel. There's a jet mode via, like, well, jet. But there's no submarine mode. Is that because there's no, like, equivalent power-up, or they just didn't really want to make any kind of... Because I guess it would just be another kind of shmup, to be honest. Yeah, it would probably be just, like, an underwater shmup. I'm not really sure what kind of power-up they would use for, like, uh... You know, submarine, because Kirby has always been able to swim pretty well. Yeah. I would. Am I think there's like one other power up that helps him swim a little bit faster. I know if you have like sword. Yeah. Or like hammer when you're underground, you can actually do like spin attacks. But um, no, I don't really see them using anything else for like a submarine. I feel it would be redundant. Yeah. No, just kind of be a rehash of uh, the submarine uh, gameplay in the first Mario Land. Now, obviously, you'll want to watch out and not hit shit that you fly straight into, so you'll want to make sure to flip to the background and foreground whenever you can. Thankfully, the game is pretty generous with, like, health pickups and whatnot, until the later stages where they become few and far between, and you're lucky to have an ice cream on hand. I don't know about you, but always in emergencies, I like to carry an ice cream in my pocket whenever I need it. Admittedly, very hard to use it when I actually need to after a while, but it's well worth the hassle in my opinion. This isn't just a throwaway, like, gameplay gimmick, either. The shmup part of Kirby Planet Robobot will feature heavily in the final boss, so it's not just something they created, you know, to pad out the gameplay of the game and whatnot. Although, strangely, they'll actually do it in a different way than expected, but again, that would be talking too much about spoilers in this case, so I will hold off until then. You can actually fire backwards if you charge with this, which is pretty helpful to uh, get certain code cubes and the like. Now, of course, as he's flying around, he accidentally uh, shoots down, you know, Donkey Kong's metal tower that he's holding Pauline on, which is pretty embarrassing when you think about it. There was actually a city level in, I think, the 1994 version of Donkey Kong for the Game Boy, which is a fucking sick game, by the way. I need to play that so much because I've seen, like, footage of that game. I love how it starts off with, like, just the normal Donkey Kong. But then it unlocks all these levels, I'm like, wow, this game actually looks really fun! I kind of want to try it, but I never get around to it, obviously. It's a shame, man. Mexi played that for us. Kind of a bit of typecasting, but he played it for us in the uh, Nintendo fun. 
I kind of want also to kind of have a handheld kind of... Like, yeah, have you ever played Donkey Kong Land for, like, Game Boy? I have, actually, and funny story, uh, I did that thing, like, at the end of the year where you can take toys and whatnot in to school, and I obviously took my Game Boy and a few of my games, and Donkey Kong Land got fucking stolen. Oh, what? Really? Oh, that's lame. Oh, well. <sighs> Leave your Game Boy with strangers, I guess. I don't know what COGS stands for, but it's a funny acronym, and it describes what we're fighting here. It's just COGS with guns on it. Um, COGS... Uh, I'm trying to think of an acronym. I, I want G to be gun, though. Like, uh, Croiky. Uh, Omega Gun System. I don't know. Christ! Oh, God's shit! <laughs> <laughs> I so, for once of the That's best. That's fantastic. I wasn't expecting that, but I like that. <laughs> thank actually. you, thank you. This is already just cathartic, Final Boss, because, you know, the patterns aren't too complex. You can just wail away on this thing. Well, you said Final Boss. It's obviously not the Final Boss. But, yeah, it does feel pretty good to fight this guy. He's easy, and he, you know, blows up in very satisfying ways. Oh, come on, just die already. All your other components are gone. There we go. Christ, oh god, shit! <laughs> oh, we did name it appropriately. Good stuff. Kapow! That was good. That was a fun level. Yeah, I kind of wish we could take jet mode uh, all the way, but uh, unfortunately we have to leave it behind here. He always crash lands, and he never even looks back at the poor thing. Well, it is a robot. It doesn't have feelings. Or does it? <gasps> wink. Wink. Aggressively winking at my PC screen right now. Hey, that just embarrasses my PC whenever I do that, so I try not to. Oh, there you go again. Oh, I'm sorry. I am number seven. Yeah, you do the dance, but it ends in disappointment and depression. If number two is shit, and number one is pee, what does that make number seven? You don't want to know what number yeah, seven yeah, is. Yeah, you know what? You're, you're right. I don't actually want to know what number seven is now that I think about it. That was Prince Fluff from Epic Yarn! Yeah, I totally played that game. I haven't played that game, by the way. Um, well, I know you don't like the game, Grumps, but I can recommend Dreamland, sorry, Epic Yarn. I was thinking of another Kirby game. You can, I can recommend their Epic Yarn LP. It's one of their better ones. Maybe. I'll think about it. I do need to play Return to Dreamland, though, uh, eventually, but I'd have to get out the Wii and hook it up, and I really don't want to do that, I'll be honest with you. Damn, man. This shit's huge. But we start at the bottom, as always. Oh, finally the first appearance of Wheel. I love Wheel, I've said this before, but it's really satisfying when they give you like a nice level to run through and you just kind of accelerate through everything and you're jumping at the right time to dodge stuff. It feels really good to play. I like Wheel, but whenever I look at it, I just think back to that one really useless Zord from Power Rangers Zeo, which was just D a wheel. D dude, you're dissing the wheel Zord. The wheel sword was pretty cool, actually. He, he was so chibi and kawaii next to, like, the fucking Pyramidus and whatnot. Oh, oh, and Pyramidus was much better. That fat ass turning into a big, <laughs> thick thighed Zord. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I like Pyramidus. But I freaking love Zeo, as you know. But don't bash the fucking wheel Zord, because he was awesome. <laughs> Thick fied? Really? That's what you remember from Pyramidus? <laughs> well, I'm really thick ish, you know, I mean, he's a very healthy figured Zord, and you know what? I want to be accepting of all Zord body types, uh, except that train one. That one was kind of weird, admittedly. Well, there were multiple train Zords in Power Rangers. You're gonna have to be a bit more specific, I think. Oh, uh, it's the, uh, it's the recent Sentai, uh, based on trains, and it was just basically kind of five trains stacked. Oh, uh, vertically. Yeah, that, that one, one looks like shit. I'm sorry, I don't really like that design. Ah, uh, trained penis Megazord. And what's to say about Miasmorus here? He's poison, we're gonna use the poison power up, which is honestly pretty cool. The poison power up is not that bad. Like, uh, you know, it's something I enjoy using. It has some good attacks. I actually really like the poison cloud effect you can do on it. It's great for, like, chipping away at bosses. It, it's actually pretty satisfying to use, which is. Uh, rare so far in terms of the new power-ups for this game, I have to admit. Alright, let's get out of here. What's your favorite and least favorite out of the new power-ups in Kirby Planet Robot? You can use the wiki for reference if you want. Yeah, I'm gonna have to for this one because I'm trying to absolutely remember. Uh, let's see. Okay, the new power-ups are Doctor, 
Poison and ESP. I would have to say Poison is my favorite and Doctor is easily my least favorite. I just don't like Doctor at all, I'm sorry. It's a very... <sighs> It's like a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none sort of thing. Um, we didn't really get a chance to cover it in detail in the last part, but you can, by using, I think, down and B, or whatever the button combination is, mix up various potions and actually have access to other powers like fire or ice, which basically replicate the powers of, well, fire or ice, making it very versatile. But otherwise, uh, not a fan of its very slow-moving pallet projectile, so I'd stick with sword for the most part, but... I'm biased and I don't really care about admitting to it, honestly. Yeah, easily the best ability of Doctor is that ability to brew, like, different particular stuff. And that can be helpful. Well, for me, I just prefer to have simple, you know, dependable abilities. And Poison kind of fits that more easily, in my opinion. You ever just kind of waltz through a, a robotic fortress and just destroy everything your way? Or was that just that my Wednesday all over again? <laughs> Man, you have the weirdest dreams, I swear to god, but uh, you know what's not weird is the stone power-up for the robot suit. This lets you punch slash push very heavy things, and it's just a joy because you feel the impact, even though the 3DS doesn't really have that much rumble functionality. In fact, I'd go as far as to say it has no rumble functionality. I'm not a fan of rumble features, I'll be honest with you, so I'm really not messing out here, but stone, yeah, stone is really fun to use in the robot because there's nothing quite like the feel of a big fuck-off punch mm -hmm. right into somebody's dome. It just feels satisfying, again, explaining my typical Wednesdays. I don't think we've mentioned the fact that the robot suit actually has a double jump or a hover ability. Now, Kirby, he can hover as much as he likes, you know, he's basically 95% air, but for such a heavy, like, mechanical suit, uh, it's got to have limitations here and there. But I love double jumps. They should be essential for a platformer, unless you're playing a really hard, like, by-the-numbers one. I don't know where I'm going with the sentence. Help me, THD! I'm floundering! Well, I mean, that wouldn't be the first time. Uh, well, okay, well, same here. But, you know, I've never really felt that double jumps should be standard in, like, a platforming game. I always feel that double jumps, they, they work best for me if they're, like, an upgrade you can get. You should feel rewarded for getting the ability to jump twice in the air. If you just kind of have that from the outset, I don't know, it makes platforming less challenging and fun, in my opinion. I see your point. You made a very good point. I'm going to address that point right now. I agree. Uh, well, that was a fantastic discussion we just had there about double jumps. Thank you. That was essentially like fucking Kronk in the Emperor's New Groove going, Ah, Cusco, the poison for Cusco. The poison designed specifically to kill Cusco. Cusco's poison. That's like that's like a Brian Michael Bendis kind of script, if you've ever read any oh, of those. Oh, don't fucking get me started. Yes, I've read some of his work, namely Ultimate Spider-Man. Really? Ultimate Spider-Man? Yes, Ultimate Spider-Man by Brian Michael Bendis. Really? Bendis wrote that? Yes, he fucking did. <laughs> I was at 4chan today and I literally walked into a Brian Michael Bendis thread where they were doing that because it was his birthday and that is exactly how that thread played out and I'm I'm really glad you actually kind of did that off the cuff. It's a, a special feature you have. <sighs> yeah, Brian Michael Bendis. Yes, that Brian Michael <laughs> Bendis. Fix wit is just saying things back and forth in a really cutesy kind of way, almost in a Joss Sweden sort of manner. No, it's just repetition. Get to the fucking point, you goddamn same face in hack! Uh, uh, that's more Greg Land than anything. I don't know. I don't know enough about comics to criticize that. That was a bit too real, because I love Ultimate Spider-Man. I'm sorry, Ben, it's happy birthday, although this will be outdated by the time you watch this play for us, I suppose. <laughs> Oh my god, there's like no rules of the road here. They obey the lights and only the lights. Oh, a casino. Okay, I guess we're not staying within the city for this particular level. Well, that's strange, because I'm pretty sure they did not improve of gambling within a King DDD's kingdom. How far does DDD's kingdom extend? Now that I think about it. Because, like, I, I seem to get the vibe, at least from the anime, that he just kind of fucking showed up and took over everything somehow. I have no idea how he became a king, or, like, did he inherit it? Did he fucking conquer the place? Because let's be honest, uh, Kirby's land that he lives in, you know, his dreamland, if you will, it doesn't really seem like the type of place to have, like, a standing military against any particular invaders. Although, to be fair, 
These guys are invading right now, and many people have invaded in the past, and Kirby pretty much soloed the entire fucking enemy team, so really that's kind of all they need. Well, if I may add an addendum to that, he pretty much soloed everyone most of the time. I'm pretty sure, like, Meta Knight got involved sometimes, or maybe even, like, DDD from time to time, because, you know, it's his world too, he is living in it. Uh, in Kirby 64, they actually do work together against an exterior threat, and I actually uh, kind of like that game a lot. It, although it's not my favorite Kirby game, I do like how you kind of build a little party of people as you go along, and you go on this quest together to stop this threat. Like, I always felt that really special to me. I don't know. Another cool thing about 64, and it's the only Kirby game I know of that does this, is that you can mix power-ups together. So if you get, I don't know, I think there's like electricity and ice, you get like a fridge, which uh, dispenses food. Uh, if you mix like archer and fire, you get a flaming arrow. And I forget exactly what the combination is, but you can get a double-ended lightsaber, which is pretty boss. I think it's electric and sword for that. I don't know, don't quote me on that. That was a really interesting gimmick that they had uh, for Kirby 64, where you can mix a lot of the powers. But to be fair, as a result, a lot of the fat powers honestly felt like shit, and some of them were pretty OP. Like, I think there's like one where you combine, I think it's Cutter and Bomb, and what you do is you get basically exploding shuriken, and that shit would just wreck people right there. There was also Rock and... I'm trying to remember the other one, but it basically made like a fireworks ability that was pretty strong. So you ran into that problem, but even though it was unbalanced, it was still pretty fun to discover all of the potential combinations you can make. Long story short, I hope they bring it back and uh, maybe tweak it a little bit because unlike Robobot, where you pretty much don't have to go back to uh, levels to find code cubes and the like, you very much had to go back to uh, levels with like certain power ups. A bit of a, a bit of a downer, but um, hey, you know it was an N64 game. Yeah, so what you gotta do? Man, the, the the fucking weird thing about Kirby 64, and everybody will remember this if they did not get 100%. If you don't get 100%, you beat the final boss. Everything looks all good and well and things like that, and the queen says bye to you, and then she gets this evil fucking look on her face because she's actually been possessed by the true final boss of the game, and it just. What a way to make you feel so bad that you did not get all of the collectibles in that game, man. It's just like, now I gotta do it. I've got to free her, man. I think that's a time-sensitive code cube, so make sure you grab it before all these balls finish bouncing. That is a time-sensitive cube, yes, so you really want to be quick there. Uh, one of the few instances, admittedly, where if you don't entirely know what to do, it can screw you over, but... I feel it's on screen long enough for you to just kind of run over and get it, so it's not too bad. Oh, I see you, Sue. We're coming for you. Now, if you destroy those dice, depending on the side that's facing up, and you can do this with the robot suit, obviously, uh, depending on the side that's facing up, so you'll do it right here, you'll get stars, and I believe if you destroy it when it's on number one, if I recall correctly, you actually can get a one-up out of this. Now, that's not too good, because... Like with earlier Kirby games, if you, like, stop playing and then, like, come back later, the extra lives you got will actually reset yeah. to, like, mm -hmm. I think it's, like, five or seven or yeah. things like that, yeah. which, it, it's just, I don't like that. I mean, just let me get extra li Okay, admittedly, lives are kind of an outdated mechanic anyway, and if you lose all your lives in this game, you're not punished really at all for it, much like with uh, more recent Mario stuff. It's just kind of a holdover. They tend to have, so yeah. I, I really don't get the point of giving you extra lives if you're just gonna reset it uh, when I go back into the game. I don't know. Put me back to like the beginning of the level. Kirby doesn't really seem like a series whose difficulty kind of warrants one ups and whatnot, but I guess they're gonna keep selling merchandise. I mean, I don't know. Uh, can you get merchandise based on the number of lives you have? Because I could not really find a place for 25 Kirby's <laughs> right about now. Uh, well, I was referring mostly to like. I had a, I don't know if this was official or not, but when I was a teenager, I had sweatbands and one of them was like the one-up mushroom from Mario, so there you go. They, they had sweatbands like that? Well, I don't know. It's Nintendo, they've made stupid shit before. Fuck, they had a Nintendo cereal system at one point, which probably tasted like cardboard. I also had one with the uh, Autobot symbol on it, which was pretty dope. Okay, I, admittedly, I would exercise to, like, 
Okay, you know what? I get when you wear like a sweatband on your forehead. Like I get that. It's to prevent sweat. But why would you wear one on your arm? At, at like one spot of your arm? Now I lift weights by the way guys, so it, it's quite exerting when you do that, especially at the weights I'm lifting, but I'm not gonna be like, oh, this one part of my arm gets sweatier than most. I better do something about that. Oh, whatever. Hiya! There you go. I, I really like the little uh, pool areas here. Like, uh, it'll get a little bit more tricky later on with some particular stuff you have to get. It can be very easy to get sideswiped by them, if you will, but it's always nice to have that little bounce around when you hit it real hard. How far will we go this time? <gasps> Is he gonna do it? Yes! I did it! I forgot all about this! I think it would have been funny if you went over to the one and then you just hit like a glass wall and Fuck. slid down. Dun, 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 dun. I did the whole dance and everything. Oh, and it rewards you greatly for doing that. Go! <laughs> I'm going, sorry. What? That is... Okay, that's in Dreamland too, because hopefully it will... Okay, Kirby's Fun Pack, I have no idea what the fuck that is. Is that like the European name for Superstar? Uh, I don't know, you're the one with the wikia, man, you can look it up for yourself. Actually, yeah, yeah, that's good. I really do think that's what it is. Let me just look very briefly here. I'm using the powers of shapes to unlock this door! Oh, it is known as Kirby's Fun Pack in PAL regions and Hoshi no Kabi Super Deluxe, obviously. Yeah, the Japanese name, there you go. Did you know the robot is angrier in the U.S. version? No, I'm just fucking with you. I just... Well, actually, it's funny you say that. You said that as a joke, but I believe on the Japanese box art, his eyes are the same as they are in the Western release. Uh, let's look here. U.S., he looks angry. PAL version, he looks angry. Japanese version, he looks angry. He is finally angry no matter where the hell he is. Although it's less anger and more determination because he's also smiling on all of the box art, so he's like, yeah, I'm in a fucking robot, let's do it, and to be fair, that would be my reaction. Oh, we get the robot right off the bat in this EX stage. I sense good times ahead, Hell Dragon. Well, let's hope so. I mean, the robot's always fun to use. I like these little satellite, uh, you know, options things in the background. I don't know, I just like them. Well, you're allowed to like banal things, it's fine. <laughs> Man, I like a lot of banal shit because I make some really simple food, I'll be honest with you. Oh, here and we go honestly... again. Yeah, go on, Nail Dragon. Tell us of your eatery delights. Uh, well, I've actually been kind of transitioning diets at the moment because I'm interested in particular types of body recomposition. I don't know if that's exactly boring enough for a playthrough. Body recomposition? Should I be worried? Are you attempting science? What? No, no, I'm just like, I'm doing a thing where I eat more fat than like carbs, and what that does is that when you get adjusted to it, you go through something called ketosis. Now, I hope you guys are taking notes, because there will be a test somehow. Um, when you undergo ketosis, your body will actually use up that stored fat more quickly and more efficiently, and once you get adjusted to it after a while, because usually your body is used to using carbs, but I've done this before. Once you actually get adjusted, you feel a lot more energetic and clear-headed. And it's kind of a neat feeling, if admittedly a weird way to eat. Frosty, what the hell was that? Dot Jeff. Don't worry, guys. We've got some real sweet toy commercials coming up, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now nah, I'm proud of you for all the work you've done with you, like working out and whatnot. And uh, I kind of feel shitty when I make fun of you for having a good diet and whatnot while I'm over here sh shoving like a kilo of Smarties down my ball. I mean, like, if you're gonna have candy, you know, Smarties isn't exactly the candy I would pick, I'll be honest with you. I still have not had my giant jelly beans that I intended to have on my birthday, but to be fair, I still ate a lot of stupid shit on the day. Actually, you know what? Christmas is coming up. Oh, I yes. Well, I, I do plan to not be as restrained as I usually am on Christmas. That's on a Sunday as well. So, I'm thinking it's jelly bean time. Jesus would want you to stop yourself with jelly beans, mate. I don't really recall that version of that verse in the Bible. Ah, uh, you very clearly haven't read the updated scripture, my friend. Okay, for this particular code cube, we've got to bash these things in a certain order. And we're doing it live. We're living it large here. Watch out for the Waddle Dees. And this isn't a live playthrough, is it? Because I know, like, Ratchet and Clank was live, so that's just... I know this is kind of the typical, you know, how we usually do it, obviously. Oh, you've been watching me and Brit's, uh, or Brit and I's playthrough of Ratchet 3? What do you think? No, I've been uh, dabbling in it here and there, you know, it seemed pretty okay. Uh, Brit gives you a lot of nice shit, which I thought was pretty funny, actually, but, uh, I don't know. Okay. 
I don't know out of 10, the Hell Dragon ranks HFC's work. Although, I think he did say that he actually had some problems uh, with uh, Up Your Arsenal. And, I mean, I can kind of see that. Then again, one of my favorite uh, Ratchet games is Tools of Destruction, but that's just me. That's the first PS3 game? Yes, that is the first PS3 game in the Ratchet & Clank Future Trilogy, followed by uh, Into the Nexus Quest for Booty. Actually, where does that line up? Hold on, let me get the Ratchet wiki, because I want to make it absolutely sure. Uh, might as well just, like, cut to Ratchet free footage right now. Jesus, I might as well explain what this little Kirby-like robot is that we've been seeing for our stuff. First of all, he's using a classic Game Boy. That's very clearly the very first model of Game Boy. It's, like, grayish-white. It's got purple buttons. It's a classic Game Boy. But basically, like, Robot will follow your actions either in the foreground or the background. You've got to keep it safe because a lot of the time it will be key to getting code cubes or special stickers like here. And uh, it's just cute. It's nice to go through these levels with a companion. You know what I'm saying? I forgot what I was fucking looking up on the Ratchet <laughs> Wiki. What game, what game comes after Tools of Destruction, I believe? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, okay, so it should be... Quest for Booty comes after Neath Tools of Destruction. I don't know why I haven't played that yet. Really should get around to that. And then after that is a crack in time. And I think those are really good games, and I think you should try them out. What I don't like, though, and this has nothing to do with Ratchet, is these sparkly balls that uh, seem easy to dodge, but can really pip you at a moment's notice. You know, I have to say, uh, before this game, I was not actually a big fan of Jet, but once I discovered some of the moves you could use, like, you know, rocket kicks and things like that, I actually had a lot of fun with this power-up. So, uh, hey, you know, just bump it up to the list for me if I have a list of power-ups that I'm not going to make right now, because that sounds like work. Well, lists is more of a me thing, really. You're not that level of OCD quiet. Uh, I don't know. I've been getting there recently. Alright, pick your power-up wisely. I would recommend... Bomb for this particular mini boss. Oh, look at his fancy wizard hat. Oh, it's a wizard hat this time because in the past it's usually like the hat the uh, Poppy Brothers tend to wear, which admittedly kind of looks like he's about to go bedtime. But they have the sleep power up that, and I say power up in heavy quotes. Oh, hey, it's a UFO. Now this guy can be a little tricky, especially on later uh, versions of this fight, especially like the harder ones you can deal with in the true arena, because he will just juke and jive like everywhere, and it's very easy to get tagged by the uh, mini, you know, units that he summons, so you definitely want to watch out for that. Well, the good thing about Bomb for this boss is you can throw it in an arc, as opposed to like Poison, which you can like make it go diagonal, like left or right, but that requires time, whereas you can throw out a diagonal bomb right away with Bomb. With Bomb, you also have a very useful ability when you're fighting bosses on the ground. You can actually roll the bomb towards them, and they will often run into it, and it will deal good damage. So it's actually been updated since, you know, the usual appearances of Bomb. See, you're doing it right there, and uh, they tend to hang around after a while. I usually, again, mostly use it for, like, ground bosses, which can be pretty useful. But Bomb does good damage. It's not my favorite power-up, because, I don't know, I just like other ranged abilities more. But it's not a bad one to pick. Almost there, guys. Almost there. Now, I thought uh, when you kill this guy, you actually get UFO. You do not. Uh, you can only get UFO by putting on a particular amiibo or by doing 100% completion of this game. And, uh, no, I don't think I'll be doing that, I'm afraid. Is that, like, similar to UFO in Epic Yarn? That's the only iteration of UFO I've actually seen in the Kirby franchise. Well, UFO has actually showed him in earlier games. I believe it is also available uh, in Kirby Superstar. You basically fly around the UFO. You have, like, a sweeping beam, kind of like beam. You also have a charge-up laser. I believe in this game in particular, it's like the power-up you can get that you can solve any particular environmental puzzle. Like, huh. it will do everything. Okay. So it's good to have that kind of thing. And I guess it makes sense that they actually offer it as 100% completion as a result. Or... If you buy Nintendo's always easily available to find Amiibo, just saying, they're just they're out in stores now, kids. I had completely forgotten that I had gotten Cloud One at all, so I'm very happy right now. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm kind of disappointed they didn't do it like one to nine, and then you land on Cloud Nine, and you're supposed to feel good because you're on Cloud Nine, but you're not because mm -hmm. you didn't get to Cloud One. Shit ain't cash, man. Shit is not cash. It's pretty arrogant to have a medal with your face on it. Uh, the, we've got a robot with our color scheme on it. Ooh, the amazing mirror. I heard that was pretty decent. 
Amazing Mirror wasn't bad. It had basically the ability to kind of summon your clones that got split up as a result of the mirror and help you do stuff. Though in practice, it wasn't really as good as it could have been. It's not a bad game, but the map is like really confusing for that. It has a weird uh, overworld map where lines, like paths are just crossing to each other and you have to go in there from the levels. It's honestly kind of convoluted and I don't really like it. I much prefer the traditional, this is a world, these are the levels you can go to, that kind of thing. Hmm, choices, choices. I'm gonna stay with Bomb. I noticed you didn't pick Archer, which is a problem because Archer can be pretty good. Admittedly, you kind of have to tank for a little bit while while you're racking up damage, but still, it's defensive play. That's kind of what I favor. Alright, here we go. Boss number two. A bunch of diamonds. Look, as long as the diamonds aren't crazy or yellow, I'm all for that. Oh, yes. Well, there's a yellow one there, but we will make an exception to the rules hitherto put upon this game. Now this boss is interesting because even though you're fighting this main unit, you're not fighting this main unit. Pretty much what it likes to do is it likes to create holographic versions of past bosses, and I believe these have shown up uh, in Triple Deluxe. Like, uh, And uh, I, I do remember that he actually makes one that shows up in Return to Dreamland. So it's kind of an interesting way to do, like, a multi-stage kind of fight, in my opinion. And the bosses really aren't that hard. I guess they can't be because it's a multi-phase sort of fight. It would be a bit unfair if they were all final boss tier, you know? Now, these guys, they definitely did show up all in Return to Dreamland. Although, and then, like, the later version of this fight, when you're going through, like, the true arena, these guys uh, can really rack up some damage, so you really want to be careful and defensive when you're taking this boss on. I was noticing some, like, poison projectiles back there. I imagine that's a bit tricky to dodge. You know, now I'm looking at the bomb hat a bit more closely, I, I realize it looks like a little birthday hat. Yeah. So, maybe it was that one particular birthday where he discovered the ability he could use bomb? I don't know. Oh man, I was in a bad place for a second there. This fucking hog's dinosaur, look at him. This thing is just goofy looking, and I always find him annoying to fight because he likes to run at you, he likes to drop ice from the ceiling, he'll sometimes try to freeze you, I, I don't know, I just find him a bother to deal with. That's pretty efficient right there. He's doing his, like, breath attack, but he's also using his tail to slowly come towards you. That's kind of ingenious, actually. Even the mid-bosses can present some level of challenge if you don't know what you're doing. And, of course, they get harder in, like, the true arena version. Alright, you've got one more left in your arsenal. Let's see it. I think, oh, oh, it's this guy. Uh, they'll bring up the name in the moment, and I'm not going to try and pronounce it, because I will probably get it wrong until I see what it's actually called. Coily Rattler, this was actually a boss uh, in Triple Deluxe, like one of the bosses you would fight at the end of a world. I was really surprised to see them busted out as like one of the holographic summons that this guy can make. Well, were you just not expecting them to use something so recent? Uh, well, I mean, I guess I expected it to a degree, because, uh, like I said, you know, a Robobot, uh, you know, kind of playing off what you said, it's a refinement of stuff from Triple Deluxe, but I guess this shameless reusing of assets kind of stands out. I mean, I don't mind the fight. It's kind of neat to see him again, but still, it's obvious. Oh yeah, we're almost done, guys. This mini boss rush of a boss is almost done. It is kind of neat that it was basically a mini boss rush in a way. And to seal the deal, we got to hit the unit itself. So just keep chucking bombs in an upward arc, and uh, here we go. It's going to happen. You can't stop it. There we go. I think if you let him take too long, he will self-destruct as an attack. Don't quote me on that. That's not fun. I want to be the one to land the killing blow. Dance with me, Kirby's. Dance with me. Let's shed some light on this. Yeah, okay. Had to open the windows first. Everyone has to see the dance of victory. Dun dun dun. These are all my butts. I have three butts. Why do you only have one? Yeah. Ah, uh, triple de butts. <laughs> my favorite Kirby game. And boom goes another leg. And all these explosions must really be messing up the mess hall in there. Okay, well, if robots eat, I would assume if they had a mess hall, it would just be disrupted right about now. Yeah, I guess that's why they call it a mess hall. Ah, ocean world. A fine platforming trope. But we'll have to get more into that next time. So please, please join us for part three of Kirby Planet Robobot. We'll be ever so grateful. See you next time for more Hellfire Comms antics. Goodbye for now.